Okay guys, uh, here we are with the undisputed king of IPC. This is the Core i7 7700K CPU. This is a Cabby Lake 14 nanometer processor running at 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, and <clears throat> what I've done is I've uh, made some changes to status core so that we can actually record data over a long period of time. So if you recall from my last videos, what we did is I took some samples from various points in the video to, to try to estimate or extrapolate the IPC of Zen. Um, that That's okay, That that's accurate, but it's not totally accurate. There is some room for error because we're only taking three samples. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is in Status Core, I can set up data recording. Uh, I hit this button here, uh, choose my directory, hit okay. And now uh, every sample is being recorded to a uh, to a spreadsheet. So now when I run the benchmark, uh, I will have that data and I can chart it in Excel and I can actually get the uh, the exact IPC uh, from start to finish for uh, for the entire for the entire run. And that's going to give us a very, very, very accurate uh, look at the IPC. Anyway, so you can see now that uh, it's rendering the image and the poor thing the heat sink that's in this computer can't keep it cool. Uh, it's pegged at 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, and that is why the processor is throttling back the speed. It should be running at 4.2 gigahertz. As you can see, it's actually running at four. Uh, that's unfortunate because that is going to slow it down a little bit, uh, but it will not affect the IPC. Because remember, the IPC is the number of instructions that were executed per clock. So even though it's dialing back the clock speed, the IPC is the same. So for the purposes of this analysis, this comparison, uh, we will still have accurate results. Uh, and there you go, it's finished, uh, and it completed the benchmark in 51.41 seconds. So I'm going to stop this video and collect our data. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and opened up that spreadsheet into Excel. Uh, that we're looking at here is uh, st status core it recorded all of the uh, processor's uh, telemetry into this file. Uh, it's a comma separated values, and it's data that you can import directly into Excel, and we're going to look at this. And just to give you an idea of what the data is that we're looking at, uh, we've got the clock speed for each of the cores, we've got the MIPS for each of the cores, we've also got the IPC for each of the cores, and then we've even got the average over here. So we're going to use this data to extrapolate the IPC of Zen, but before we do that, let's just kind of take a look and see what it is that we're looking at. I'm going to show you the clock speed of core 4 over time by uh, creating a line chart. So there you can see when the benchmark uh, when the computer was idle, uh, and when it transitioned to when the benchmark was running, uh, and then you can see as the benchmark uh, was running that the clock speed started to throttle back and it kind of settled in. You know, the, the turbo boost was dialing back and it settled in at four gigahertz, and then it dropped off very suddenly uh, when the uh, when the benchmark ended and the computer went back to idle. Um, now, before we take a look at this data, what we're going to do is we're going to trim that. We don't need the idle time in here at all. So let me close that chart and then I'll select the cells that we don't want anymore. Uh, the, these are the idle time. Uh, scroll down here to the bottom and you can see right here uh, this is pretty much where the benchmark ended so we're just going to delete that data and what we're left with now is uh, we have only the uh, the data that was recorded during the benchmark. So let's chart that and see what it looks like. All right, so there's your average IPC. And as you can see, uh, and we've, we observed this in our other videos, where as time goes on, as the um, as the image gets uh, rendered further and further out, that the IPC tends to drop. Um, and we don't know exactly why that is. It may have to do with, uh, you know, as the image gets larger, uh, there's uh, more thrashing of the cache. Uh, but, you know, also uh, remember that the image is different there too on the end uh, at the edges. And so it changes the instruction mix as well. So all of those factors have uh, have an impact on the IPC. But what doesn't have an impact on the IPC is the clock speed. It doesn't matter what the clock speed is, the IPC is going to be the same. If the, and so in the, in, the other, in the other chart where you saw that the clock speed was sort of decaying over time, that's not changing our calculation for IPC. Uh, anyway, so let me go ahead and close that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, um, we're going to take this column and we're going to calculate the, the average IPC 
for Cabby Lake over the entire duration of that benchmark. 2.07. Uh, that is the IPC per core. Now remember, there's two threads per core, so the IPC of each thread is about 1.38, uh, and the average IPC per core is 2.07. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to scale this number up and get it all the way up to a grand total of number of instructions that were executed in that benchmark. And the way that we do that uh, is just a few simple steps here. We First, we take the IPC per core, and then we multiply it per uh, the number of cores, which is four. And that gives us an IPC of 8.3. Uh, what that is, is that's the number of instructions per clock cycle for the entire processor. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to multiply that number by the clock speed. Uh, now in the previous videos we were able to multiply that by a static number because the clock speed was always locked uh, for the for the for the uh, Ivy Bridge it was at 2.8 gigahertz and then for the uh, Skylake uh, I forget what it was but it, anyways but it was a static clock speed. Uh, this one the clock speed was varying for the uh, over the benchmark so we have to take the average. In column M, we have the average clock speed over the benchmark. So all we have to do is calculate that. And we have uh, 4,058 uh, 4, megahertz is the average clock speed per core. So we can take this number and we multiply it by the clock speed. And what that gives us is a number of 33.7 billion instructions per second. Uh, and then the next thing we want to do is take that number and multiply it by the number of seconds that it took to complete the benchmark, which is 57.4. All right. Uh, and that gives us a grand total of 1.9 trillion instructions. Uh, again, that's the number of instructions that Blender executed. The x86 instruction pipeline executed uh, that many instructions when rendering uh, the image. Um, now, if you recall from the previous video, we had calculated uh, something like 2.1 trillion uh, as the grand total. That's that's a little that's you know a pretty big difference. We're looking at uh, you know something like 10% uh, margin of error here. That's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. Um, that's unfortunate, uh, but that is the reality of the situation. Is we only had three data points here. We've got 114 data points, so we're much more accurate, and I feel much better about this uh, about this data than I did about the last video. Uh, anyways, so now that we have the grand total number of instructions, we use the same method we used in our previous videos to work backwards and calculate the IPC of Zen. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we take the grand total and we divide it by time. Uh, the time value in this case is how long it took Ryzen to render that image uh, when AMD demonstrated it at their New Horizon event, and that's 35.1 seconds. That gives us 55.1 billion instructions per second. Now this is uh, uh, a 3.4 gigahertz processor. So the next thing we do is we take that number and we divide it by the clock speed. And that gives us a total IPC of 16.2. So right off the bat, you can see uh, that the IPC of Ryzen, uh, because it has twice as many cores as Cabby Lake, uh, the IPC is about twice that of, of, uh, of Cabby Lake. It's not exactly, but it's very close. Anyway, so now we want to work backwards and we want to find out what the IPC is per core. So that's easy to do because we just take this number and we divide it by the number of cores, which is 8. And that gives us a number of 2.02. .02. So compare that to the, the, the Cabby Lake of 2.07 and you can see that, that Ryzen is right on the heels of Cabby Lake. Uh, all the problems that AMD had with Bulldozer in the past of having a terrible, 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 terrible pipeline and IPC, that has obviously been solved. The IPC of Ryzen is very close to Cabby Lake. We can calculate exactly simply by taking this cell, divide it by this cell, and that tells us that Cabby Lake is 2.4% faster per clock than Ryzen. But remember, Ryzen has twice as many cores. So it's pretty obvious which one provides the better value here. Um, now, you're probably wondering also, well, how does this IPC uh, compare to Broadwell E? Well, let's take a look. All right, guys, uh, here we have the data for Broadwell E. Um, so let's just get right to it. I'll show you what we're looking at here. 
uh, let's, let's graph, uh, let's chart the clock speed for core five. Uh, and there you have it. It's pretty well locked at 3.5 gigahertz. Now what I did is I already I already trimmed it so you guys don't have to sit through that. Uh, there's a little bit of sampling error uh, in the timing, but I mean that's that's 3.5 gigahertz. The chip was locked at that clock speed during the benchmark. Uh, so let's take a look at the average IPC because that's really what we're interested in. Uh, and there we go. So you can see that the IPC on Broadwell E also uh, tends to decline over time just as we saw with the Cabby Lake processor and just as we saw with the Skylake processor and the uh, Ivy Bridge before it is that uh, it's just you know as the as the image is being rendered um, and, and as it goes away from the center there appears to be a reason for a lower IPC I'm gonna guess uh, that there's a little bit more cache thrashing less cache coherency uh, and maybe the image is a little bit more complex there at the at, at the outer edges, and so the IPC tends to drop just a little bit. But this also demonstrates that the IPC is independent of the clock speed. It doesn't matter what the clock speed is, the IPC is going to be the same. I could have locked that processor at 1.5 gigahertz, and the IPC still would have been identical to what you're seeing here. So uh, any argument that the uh, Cabby Lake processor that we just looked at would be invalid because it was throttling is an invalid argument. That is a non-issue. Anyway, so you guys are interested in seeing what the uh, what the average IPC is and how it compares to Zen. Uh, we can tell by looking at the data already that it is going to be lower. Let's find out how much lower. So let's go with the average for the entire column. 1.93. That is the IPC of Broadwell E. 1.93. Now compare that to the IPC of Ryzen, which is 2.02. The way that we calculate that is we just simply take the IPC of Ryzen, we divide it by the IPC of Broadwell E, and we come up with a number which is 1.049. That means that the IPC of Ryzen is 4.9 seven percent faster than the IPC of Broadwell E and that is damn impressive and this is this is this is the thing that is going to turn AMD around because they're going to they're going to have a processor that they can sell I mean look at this guys um, you know I actually have uh, a, an excavator based AMD processor in the house uh, I don't have the data for it yet but we're going to pull it up but I can tell you that the IPC of that thing is dismal. It's like 1.2 or 1.1 or something like that. Look at the IPC of Ryzen. It is 4.9. Let's just call it 5. It is 5% faster than the IPC of Broadwell E and that is damn impressive. Now it's it's just not quite, it's right on the hills, right on the hills of, of Cabby Lake. Um, and that, uh, I, I think that just goes to show that uh, AMD has solved the problem, the terrible, terrible, terrible IPC of bulldozer and excavator and pile driver and all that stuff, they've solved it. And this is a CPU that can compete. It's got a higher IPC. It's uh, got a higher clock speed than Broadwell E. It costs a heck of a lot less money than Broadwell E. It uses less power than Broadwell E. And I, honestly, I see no reason to buy a Broadwell E over Ryzen. There's no reason. I build high-performance PCs at work for our build machines, and we use Broadwell E computers. Um, there's no reason why I should continue to use Broadwell E for those computers because Ryzen is going to be faster. Uh, and I also see no reason to recommend buying Cabby Lake over Ryzen. It's going to be, you're getting half the number of cores for the same price. Think about that. The IPC is, the, is, is essentially the same, uh, but the number of cores is, is different. The, uh, the exception to that, of course, uh, is going to be for video gaming. Um, if you're if you're into overclocking and you have a good cooler and um, your FPS matters the most, then there's still a case to be made for going with Intel, uh, for going with the KB Lake because the clock speed when overclocked is 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 pretty impressive. You have to imagine you're going to have um, a five gigahertz Cabby Lake versus a four gigahertz Ryzen. You know that's still a pretty compelling reason, at least for video games. Um, 
uh, to go with that CPU, even though Ryzen is still going to have a much higher uh, compute bandwidth uh, capability than, than Cabby Lake. But we know that video games don't quite use all the cores yet. Um, but even then, it's still not cut and dry. I think most people are going to say, uh, you know, uh, that Ryzen is going to be more than adequate for the games that I play. And then uh, for the productivity that I do, uh, you know, so like if you're in, uh, if you do video editing, if you're making YouTubes, if if you do compiling or 3D rendering or Photoshop or web development and other things, uh, you're going to look at it and it's and it's going to be a no-brainer. You're just going to say, look, I'll take I'll take the slightly lower clock speed of Ryzen and get twice as many cores because that the the net the net payoff uh, for that the net return on investment is much much higher. So. Uh, the way that I see this is I think Intel has a real problem on their hands. Uh, people are going to realize that AMD is offering a real, real compelling product here. Uh, uh, so it'll be interesting to see where that all, uh, how that all plays out. Um, one thing that I would like to see, I think this would make me very happy, is if the Core i3 is finished. I think it's done. Because I don't see any reason why uh, a person, a value or a budget conscious person would think, you know, I should buy an overpriced Core i3 when they could get a, a, a Ryzen uh, a quad core with hyper threading uh, for about the same price or maybe a little bit less than the Core i3. Uh, huge, huge benefit there. Uh, the Core i5, um, Again, I don't see a real compelling reason to go with Core i5 uh, with the 6 and the 8 core uh, AMD Ryzen's being pretty competitive there on price. Don't see it. So, in fact, uh, you know, as I think about this whole product stack, um, there, isn't a, there isn't a desktop CPU that can uh, compete with Ryzen, in fact. Uh, you know, the, the, total, the total compute power of Ryzen is better than Broadwell E8 core. Uh, so it, it's clearly better than the uh, Cabby, Lake, Cabby Lake 4 core. Uh, and so that leaves only the Broadwell E10 core as being superior to, to Ryzen. But is it? It has uh, two extra cores. So you're looking at 25% um, more computing power, uh, but it has a lower clock speed. So it's more in the 20 20% range. And then if you look at the clock speed of Ryzen as being at 4 gigahertz compared to the 3 gigahertz of the uh, 10 core Broadwell E, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see any reason why somebody would shell over 1700 bucks when they could save a thousand, 1200 bucks. Yeah. So I, I, I just don't see the case for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Intel's got a problem. Anyway, so if you and if you guys enjoyed this video, you're nerds, and uh, you should share it with with other nerds uh, who might enjoy it as well. Uh, and subscribe to my channel so that um, you'll be the first to see the next video. All right, see you later.